you know, we've heard from already United and Delta, not much change. Um, you know, I think we're seeing different commentary about when the airlines get cash flow break even. Uh, but the real story is when does this reopening trade open? When do we see an uptick in bookings? And when do people feel safe traveling again? Our favorite pick in the airlines is love. Uh, that's because they're more domestically driven. We think domestic travel will come back faster than international, as well as leisure prior to business. All right. So, Sheila, so we not made... much change from the airlines today. Got it. Um, we mentioned in the beginning, uh, Boeing recorded a, a record quarterly loss, uh, much steeper than expected. Also, the 777X was pushed back to 2023 and no guidance, but Boeing only down about a percent or so this morning. Was there something more positive in there that beyond the headlines that people may have missed? I mean, there were so many billion dollars in charges. There was definitely nothing positive in that Boeing earnings report yesterday. Uh, the 777X delay, again, nothing new. Um, it, it was pushed out from 2022 to late 2023, so about a year and a half delay. The two reasons for that delay are one more regulatory scrutiny, as we've seen with the 737 MAX. We've heard from the business jet OEMs yesterday, General Dynamics and Textron. They're seeing some slight delays as well. Um, so that, that was part of it. But the real reason is the 777X is lever to the wide body market. That's international travel. The order book was fairly limited at around 300 orders centered around five major customers and therefore the big push. Granted, it's a 20-year decision to push the aircraft, but no surprise there's no immediate appetite in 2022 for the aircraft. So, Sheila, let's stick with Boeing for a second. Uh, your price target for Boeing is 275 significant upside for this company in particular. That's under 200 this morning. What do you see as the catalyst for this kind of price action? It's really to get back to a normalized free cash flow, which is the catalyst across our aerospace coverage. So some of the names we like are Boeing, Raytheon Technologies, Transdime Spirit. So you could get a package of those, whether it's OE demand or aftermarket, lever to more immediate travel. Um, the rationale for our price target is based on a normalized 2023 free cash flow number. So the free cash flow numbers are going to be pretty big losses in 2021. That's because of some payments Boeing has to give the airlines prepayments. They improve massively in 22 and 23 and 24. They start to normalize. The reason they're improving massively is because Boeing's starting to unwind the max that's been grounded for you know 18, 24 months now. Uh, that just started flying in December. So as we look at a normalized free cash flow, we think Boeing could earn around $10 billion in free cash flow. We put a discount in market yield of around 6% free cash flow, and we get our 275 uh, target price. Let's talk a little bit more about the MAX. Uh, European regulators giving the green light for the MAX to go back up in the air. How big of a part will the MAX play in Boeing's potential recovery? I thought maybe that was the one positive to come out of uh, yesterday's earnings call. So I would mention the 737 MAX right now. There's been about 40 deliveries within the first 30 days to five airline customers. Uh, that's pretty positive as we expect 180 deliveries for 2021. I would say six months ago, I thought that estimate was pretty aggressive. I'm feeling more comfortable about that now. And that's going to be part of the inventory unwind of 400 aircraft sitting there. Yesterday, the European authorities uh, approved the aircraft. And Dave Calhoun on the call said that by Q1, they expect all other regulatory uh, authorities to approve the aircraft uh, to fly by the end of Q1. So, again, that was a positive data point we had not heard before. All right, Sheila, back to the airlines that reported their earnings today. You mentioned that Southwest Airlines Love is your top pick. What are you expecting from the other two? Um, we actually don't cover JetBlue. On American, we are underperform rated. Um, we think their uh, travel exposure, their business exposure um, is not positive. And we also think there could be some pricing wars across the big three airlines, whether that's Delta, United, and American. We're seeing love coming into markets um, because it has the capacity to right now. Two years ago, uh, you know, load factors were at 80 percent, was very high. Um, you, you couldn't get the route structure. But what we're seeing is love coming into the market, opening new routes, pricing those routes low, and potentially gaining market share. And because Love has an all-737 fleet, it lost out on some market share in 2019 and 2018, um, and, and it'll allow it to regain some and maybe plus it up. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.